Trevor Lawrence had to be helped off the field after getting his right ankle awkwardly stepped on and then twisted here on this play. And so in this video, we'll take a closer look at this injury and also touch on what exactly could have happened with Christian Kirk. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and my goal in this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. Now let's get right to the play here with Trevor Lawrence, and he officially here just before the end of the game is considered questionable with what they're calling an ankle injury. Now I'll admit, when I first saw the play, I really wasn't as concerned about his right ankle and foot here. There doesn't seem to be that severe of an amount of inversion or real stress placed on the ankle or the foot. To be honest, I was more concerned about how he awkwardly sort of rolled up on that right knee. Now that raises a couple concerns. Number one, something more like a meniscus tear in the knee, but so far we're hearing that this seems to be an ankle injury, so we'll first discuss that. Also real quick, we'll talk about Christian Kirk, but later on in the video. This really doesn't look like more than a traditional inversion low ankle sprain here for Trevor Lawrence. We can see as he steps back with that right foot and ankle, his own player accidentally steps on the medial or inner portion of his right ankle, which then causes his ankle to go into a little bit of eversion. Now there's also some plantar flexion of his ankle, meaning his foot is pointed downward. And so this plantar flex position is going to put some pretension on the ATFL, which is one of the three main ankle ligaments. And then as you get some of that inversion can put extra stress on it. So really, unless there's something about just little, basically stepping on the medial part of his ankle causing like a significant bruise or laceration or something like that, there doesn't look to be honestly all that much inversion that we see on Lawrence's right ankle there. Now, as he rolls over on it a little bit, yes, it gets kind of caught up underneath him. And so could things have been made a little bit worse just from rolling up on it? It's possible. I will say when we talk about the possibility of a knee injury, this is usually what we see when people get rolled up on like this. But in this case, Lawrence's foot was internally rotated. So you can see here as he rolls up onto that foot, the toe is pointed inward. Usually when the toe is pointed outward, seems to be more of when we get these MCL injuries. Now with that internal rotation, still think about the LCL, the lateral collateral ligament, and just this amount of hyperflexion as he's twisting. Also worry about things like the meniscus within the knee. So maybe a little bit worse as he rolled up on it here, just putting a little bit more inversion stress, but really initially looks just to me like an inversion sprain mechanism. Now we'll talk with our anatomy tool about how that might actually be a more significant injury just given that mechanism. But first, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of the video. This video is sponsored by Geology. Geology is a 22 times skin, hair, and body care company with products centered around a handful of ingredients that have been proven and trusted by dermatologists for decades. When you just go to the store, skincare kind of feels like a gamble, right? But Geology is gonna help design programs tailored just to you. And their skincare products have become part of my daily routine. I start my day off with an everyday face wash followed by a vital morning face cream. Then in the evening, repeat the everyday face wash followed by a nourishing night cream and an overnight repairing eye cream. They're simple and effective and take the guessing game out of taking care of your skin. And right now for a limited time, they're gonna hook you up with an insanely awesome deal. Right now, if you use my code Brian70, they're gonna give you 70% off their award-winning skincare trial set. There's even more, they're also gonna give you 50% off when you add on one of their skin, hair, or body add-on products to your skincare trial set. Not only is Geology the best in the skincare game, but they've also released a lot of amazing new hair, body, and skin products that I love using. In particular, their hair co-wash is fantastic. They also have some really great body washes. So there's things for you to check out no matter what you're looking for for that personal care routine. So take advantage of this fantastic offer today and do something to not only step up, but also simplify your skincare routine. Thank you again to Geology for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back to our learning. When we look at our biodigital anatomy tool here, it's important to remember that there's more than just the ankle ligaments, right? So when we talk about an inversion sprain, we're typically looking at the three main ligaments here on the outside portion of the ankle. And you can see right there's a lot of other stuff going on. So this ligament highlighted is the ATFL. It's gonna run from the fibula to the talus, going down around the CFL and then the PTFL in the back. But you can see there's all of these other soft tissue structures. There's the high ankle sprain ligament. And importantly, in this case, there's the perineus longus and brevis muscles and tendons that wrap around the outside portion of the fibula. They originate up on the top portion of the fibula up here by the knee. So kind of these muscles right here. They then come down, they wrap around the posterior portion of that lateral malleolus or that distal fibula bone right there. And then they come down and insert either on the base of the fifth metatarsal or in the case of the longest, wrap all the way around the underside of the foot to go over to the first toe. Those tendons are held in place by this retinaculum, this perineal retinaculum that basically acts as a little seat belt to keep those ligaments in the right proper position. Sometimes whenever you have an ankle injury or an ankle sprain, 
you can twist it in a way where you actually tear this retinaculum and cause these perineal tendons to displace anterior and the front side of the fibula. It's a less common injury, but it's something that can happen when we see these inversion mechanisms. Of course, we also have to worry about contusions to these bones. You can have injury to the cartilage, and of course, possibility of fractures either on this distal fibula or potentially on the inside portion here, this medial malleolus. So yes, while the mechanism looks like a typical inversion position of the ankle, which typically causes just an ankle sprain, there are some of these other injuries like to the perineus tendons, that retinaculum or cartilage that could result in a longer absence than just a sprain of these ligaments. And I will say a first time ankle sprain can be extremely, extremely painful. And so just because it's a sprain doesn't mean they have to walk off the field and look like they're not bothered in any way. So if we go back and look at this play one more time for Lawrence, we can see here as he steps, the foot's a little bit plantar flex pointed down, load comes in pushing the medial side of his ankle outward, which forces that ankle into a subtle amount of ankle inversion, which can put those lateral ligaments at risk or also less common things like the perineal tendons, that retinaculum, or something like a fracture. Overall, if this truly ends up being just an ankle injury, nothing about the mechanism honestly looks all that concerning. But of course, we don't have the full story not doing his exam, but just review of the video, doesn't seem like this is gonna be a long-term thing. Okay, finally, let's talk a little bit about Christian Kirk. He was officially ruled out of the game with a groin injury, and I saw a lot of discussion about what might actually be going on in terms of his groin. But to me, this is pretty classic for presenting like an adductor or a groin muscle or tendon injury. As Kirk lands here, of course, we're worried about this left side. And as he lands, that left side is a little bit rotated outwards and he gets a little bit of force load on that groin muscle. So here as he's trying to turn his body back, look and see where his trunk is pointed relative to that lower leg. So the lower leg in this position is abducted, it's out a little bit, and then as he lands, that's going to put an eccentric load on his inner thigh muscles, the adductors, the groin muscles, and I suspect whenever he caused the injury or that strain. And we can actually see right as this play sort of wraps around, right away Kirk is actually grabbing more on that inner portion of the thigh. It looked like he was grabbing more straight midline, but he really truly is grabbing more on the inner portion of that thigh where you'd classically see a groin muscle strain or tendon injury. Also, as we saw him walk off the field, he was clearly limping and favoring that left side, which is not something that you would do if you had something like a testicular injury. Also, if there was concern for that type of injury, they probably would have gotten him to the hospital a long time ago to do something like an ultrasound to look for a hematoma or some type of torsion. Now, still, this could be a little bit of a prolonged absence, just groin strain, muscle injury could be at least a two to four week sort of thing. So could still have serious implications, but I would not be as worried about things like scrotal or testicular injuries. So that's it for these two injuries. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. Thank you for watching. And until next time, we'll see you later.